I don't know if Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I am Ariana where black sheep meet and today is of course the first Saturday of the month which means it's a cross stitch journey video and I have a lot to show today. So this month definitely things were piling up. Now I know my channel has a lot of like sewing stuff and a little bit of diamond painting stuff so if you're specifically here for my cross stitch videos you can go ahead and you can search my playlist because I have all of my cross stitch videos in one playlist. So in case you're just interested in those, they're there right there for you separated out from everything else. So you don't gotta go searching through all of my videos. But welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back to all my old subscribers. So to start off, I will go through a quick life update just to give you what's going on, what's about to go on. Um, I guess starting with an update on my hair loss on my COVID vaccine, the second one, how I was saying I lost a lot of um, hair in my eyebrows. Well, a few days later after the last video, I started losing hair in this eyebrow. <laughs> so it was really patchy and yeah. But up until about a week and a half ago, I noticed that they both started growing back. So they're, this one's not fully like grown back, but it's growing back. So crisis averted. The second thing is I had a super bad day. I don't know if it was bad juju just being shot out at me, but it was just like everything was going wrong that day. I was supposed to take my husband to work because I had a hair appointment and we got all the way to his work and it turns out he forgot his his hat. I forget the specific name for it, but he forgot his hat for his uniform because he's military. And so he couldn't even get out of the car. So we had to drive all the way back home, come all the way back. And I dropped him off. So I'm driving back and as I'm driving back, I'm like running over all this trash. I swear I didn't see it when I was driving. Like it just came out of nowhere. And at some point I'm driving on the freeway and there's this truck in front of me, like a regular truck, and it's got like planks of wood, like angled on the back. So all the way across the top of it to the back of the truck bed, and it's angled like that. And I'm like, this gives me final destination vibes, so I'm gonna move over. And as soon as I move over, a chunk, like a big, not, it's not like, um, it was a good like, I don't know, what is that, seven inches or so? But it was, it was a good length, and it flew off, and right in front of my car and as it's jumbling around that's when I run over it because I was you know not that far behind him in the opposite lane so thankfully there wasn't too, any damage on my car but yeah I just kept running over things and I was like this is a bad sign already and then I didn't have enough time to like I had like 10 minutes to get ready I get my girls ready before I had to go to my hair appointment and so I go and get my hair cut and the girl is like highly recommended in my community. I hate my hair, guys. <laughs> I feel like a Yeti. It's, I mean, from what I wanted, she kind of did it, but not really. I just, it looks okay right now because I played with it a lot. This is actually the first time I've worn my hair down since it was cut. Like I've just been throwing it up because I can't even look at it. My bangs, I think, have grown a little bit because they look a little more um, nicer, a little longer too, because she cut them pretty short, but they're kind of wonky. She cut them all wonky. And I wanted like a really nice shag with lots of layers and she just put it all one length. So I'm surprised it's like doing something nice right now because otherwise it looked like, like I was a disheveled, Betty Page or like, yeah, like some sort of pinup girl, that old like 50s sort of hairdo, but ugly. <laughs> so it was a bad day. I didn't cry. Honestly, I was like, I saw it when I was there and I was like, I'm just gonna trust the process. Let me go home, wash my hair, style it myself, and I'm sure it's gonna look great. No, uh -uh, I think I, Played with it all week and it's just like I said this is the first day it's actually looking okay but I put a lot of it in the back so 
yeah, it was a bad hair day and then and a bad hair week, a bad haircut. So I'm going to get it fixed on Tuesday. I'm going to go to the place that I originally should have gone to and hopefully they do a better job. We'll see. I'm just going to have them fix it and put all the layers that I want in. So as of today, my husband is about to leave to the airport and he's going to pick up his best friend who's going to be with us for the weekend um, up until Monday. So he'll be here hanging out with us. And then on Sunday is my daughter's fifth birthday. Since you are watching this on Saturday, my daughter's birthday is actually tomorrow and she is going to be five. So time is just slipping through the fingers. She's grown up and I'm telling them every day to stop growing, but they obviously don't listen to me. Um, but at the end of the month, my brother and sister-in-law are coming to visit. So they're going to be here for a good two weeks. So we'll be able to celebrate 4th of July with them. So it's going to be a very busy month and I don't know, we're trying to see if we can go home when they go back because they're driving out here to Texas from California. So I'm, we're trying, we're thinking about driving back with them and finally getting in that, that vacation time with the family, but we'll see. It's still in the works and we just have to see how much money it's going to cost to do this big old trip and stuff. I haven't seen my brother and sister-in-law in three years or so, so I'm definitely gonna wanna spend time with them and do stuff with them. So yeah, so that is the life update and just trying to keep it short and sweet for you guys. But at least now you can kinda see what will be affecting my stitching time this month coming up. I still plan to be doing tons of stitching, but you know, you never know. But all right, let's go ahead and get into the whips. And this pile of whips is slowly getting bigger. <laughs> so the very first whip that I'm going to show you is the one that I show first every single time because it's my very first cross stitch project. And I think I like keeping it in the order that I'm starting them. So maybe it's a little better to see like my progress if you're watching my videos back to back. But I don't know, that's just how I see it in my head. But this first whip is Celestine by Margaret Morales and it is a heaven and earth design. And here is the last time that I showed it. And my goal for this one was to finish the row, but if not, at least the page, which was like two columns that I had left. So what goal did I actually hit? I finished the row. Oh my gosh, I finished the row. It's done. The first row is finally done. Finally. That took forever and a year. It well, it almost took a year. I started this at the end of July. At the time, I don't I didn't know the significance of writing a start date, so I I didn't pay attention to what day I actually started it. But I know it was like the last week of July. But yeah, that took a year, <laughs> almost, but I finished it. So this is how wide she is gonna be. And then I think I have, I do have three more rows and then the fourth row is like a half of a page. The whole row is a half of a page. So um, anyway, so I worked on this side and I finished this whole, where was it? It was like up here or somewhere. So I finished this whole section right here. Oh man, that was a lot. This blue was annoying, but because that's where a lot of the confetti was, but uh, yeah, I got very color blocky a little bit down here. And that was kind of nice actually to finally have a little color blocked area on this. Um, yeah, so that's like the tip of her wing, but yeah, I'm so happy. I finished the row last night. It was like my last and final day of doing a project before this. I was recording this video and I had just finished it. I didn't think I was gonna make it at one point. So this is a 25 count linen and I'm doing two over one full cross and I did work on this for 15 days. 15 days, half the month I worked on this to get, 
done that took forever i'm telling you it took a long time i did 6068 stitches to complete the row and essentially i finished one page and then finished the next page so i finished page five right one two three four five yeah i finished page five so essentially i finished two pages and that's how i'm gonna see it because that was a lot of work so that makes me at 34,299 stitches into this project and I'm 22.27% complete. And I did work on this the last half of the month. So this was the last project I worked on. I finished everything else and then I came to this one. So like I said, you guys know how excited I am about her, but I am ready for a break. I'm going to put her away. I will probably not pull her out until the end again so I get a nice good break from her and then my goal on her might be a lot smaller because there's other things I want to do which I'll show in a little bit so yeah that's exciting though I got my first row done that's pretty awesome so this is my first like row row like I've never done a row <laughs> this is my first project so I will show the back one more time now that I have a full row of it. So that is my back. I'll get a little closer so you can see all the details. All the little threads that poke out, they make such like so much character on it. So much character on it. But yeah, this was definitely the color blocked area. See, these are all color blocked too, so. Yeah, it did get a little quicker at the very, very end, but it did at least take me at least two days to finish a whole column. So that is Celestine, and we will see her again next month to see where we get with her. It's funny because on Pattern Keeper, it shows you how many more stitches you have to make with a specific floss when you choose it. And there's a couple of them that are down to like 100 stitches left but it's kind of like you're making something with sprinkles and then you go to sweep it up, but there's always a couple sprinkles left over that you like find later on. It's kind of like that, like there's sprinkles of that color all the way around the picture. So I just, there's not a color I'm able to like put away anytime soon. Like I'm gonna have to use all the colors until the very end essentially. But I really do feel super accomplished finishing that goal like I said it was 15 days like I didn't really I thought maybe it would be like 12 days but I guess I squeezed in a couple more I'm like I said I'm surprised I made it because that was the last project I was working on so I didn't really give myself a time frame to work on it I thought I would finish it a lot sooner but it's okay so my next whip is Persephone and it is by Alexandra V. Buck, and it is a heaven and earth design as well. So these are my two super, super big ones. Now, the last time you saw it, it's right here, and I had finished the page. And so my goal on this one was to finish another page. And this is what I have. I finished another page. This was really easy though. I'm telling you, this is like, color blocky with a tiny bit of like other colors mixed in so it's really easy to like fly through this the only thing is like it's just background right now so it's pretty boring uh and it will be pretty boring for the next two pages by page five is when i start to get into like his hair but the very like top half of his hair so it's gonna be a while but this took a short amount of time to achieve <laughs> so let's see so this is a 28 count easy grid and i am doing two over one ten stitch and i'm really enjoying it i'm super enjoying it especially now that i see the progress that i get doing the 10 stitch compared to the progress i got on celestine like it's totally worth it to figure out the 10 stitch to do these like super super big projects um, but I am, 
I did work on this for seven days, so a whole week, and it got me a whole page. And I did 7,840 stitches, but of course it's 10 stitch, so if you wanna be technical, it's half of that. And then, so far I have 15,680 stitches completed, and it's 4.16% done. So this was the second project that I worked on. And yeah, I'm really happy with it. I'm enjoying it. I like the coverage. You can still kind of see a little bit of white in there, but I'd wonder, but I'm wondering once I take it off and like let it relax and stuff, I'm sure it really won't. You won't really see that. I mean, from here, you can't even tell from here. So yeah, it looks really good. So I'm gonna end up taking this off and I'm gonna move it over uh, when I start again. And yeah, it's pretty awesome that I'm actually moving over already and this is gonna get tucked underneath a little bit. So, and then my back, my back is still really neat. Look at that, look how neat that is. Now that you can see like a lot of it, you can definitely see like how clean it is. But there's the back with that. Super cool. So that is Persephone. So yeah, so this was my second goal. I wasn't uh, nervous about not getting it. This one, I remember the first page went by very quickly. So I knew the second page was gonna go just as quickly. So hopefully the third page will be just as quick. But otherwise I don't have anything else to say about this one for now. So I'm excited to see what it'll look like next month. Okay, so my third whip is Halloween Quaker. And this is by Lila Studio. So I will show you what it looked like last time you saw it. Boy, do I have a lot to say about this one. <laughs> Well, let's get started. So, and this is what it looks like now. What I've gotten up to. Oh, it's very small, let me close this up. So this is my progress on it so far. So before I get into the nitty gritty of what's going on with this guy, I will tell you all the details first. So this is a 40 count hand dyed linen called Halloween Party from Barbarelle Creations. And it's a one over one full cross and I'm using the call for colors and I worked on this guy for five days and I did 1469 stitches but I had a ton of frogging that I had to do <laughs> a ton of frogging you see this tree? Do you see the invisible tree? It's because I swear to you, I stitched that tree all over again with how many times I had to like frog and like pick it out and restitch. <sighs> Such a pain in the butt. And then I think it was this, this, it was this spider I messed up. I had to frog that one and restitch that. I also had to fix something in the house. I don't remember what now, it was a while ago. This was the first project they worked on after my last video. And then I got to this. You see the little chimney? It's supposed to be attached to the house. <laughs> it's supposed to be attached to the house, but it's directly where it's supposed to be on the pattern. So what does that tell us? It tells us that there are quite a few things off because that is a big gap. It's not even like, oh, I guess it is like one. No, it's two rows, one, two. It's two rows. Oh, did I say one over one? No, it's actually one over two. I'm doing one over two. So, I have two rows that I'm off, well, four rows essentially, but two that I'm off of. So something 
is totally off, which means that my tree is still in the wrong spot. But am I going to stitch that? Hell no, I am not. It's going to stay there. I'm thinking what I'm going to have to do is just kind of move thing, like move this back, leave this all here, and then just adjust whatever is around here. I don't know. I got to see. I got to see if it's really going to like make things funny. But as I was going back to see what else was wrong, I think something was wrong over here here or I know this is in the wrong spot. I think this has to be move, moved over by like one or two stitches. Yeah, there's a lot wrong. There's a lot out of place and I don't know where. <laughs> as soon as I noticed that this was actually a chimney and it was supposed to be attached to the house, I just smiled and I put it down and I put it in its bag and I put it away <laughs> and I said, okay, I just, I love this so much. I love this one. I love it a lot. It's like so fun to stitch. It's really pretty. I'm in love with this fabric. Have you seen the fabric? I'm in love with this fabric, but I love you. Let me stitch you. Why are you acting like this? This is like unrequited love, seriously. Which tells you I've probably been reading too many romance novels. <laughs> I, I'm just so sad because I want to stitch it. I want to spend time on this and it's not letting me. So I'm going to pull it back out. I don't know if it'll be the first one, but I will pull it back out and try again. But you can see like I just, I pulled out my needle and was like, okay, I'm, I'll let you have your space. <laughs> just left it. Cause there's something here. And I, I think that's when I realized when I put that stitch in, I realized there was supposed to be something next to it, I think. And that's when I noticed that that was a chimney and <laughs> it's not attached to the house. So I will have to go back and really sit down and look at it and then see what I can do to cover my mistakes. And hopefully my little adjustments will be okay. I think so. I mean, no one's gonna know except for me, right? I mean, well, now you guys know that I told you, but you know, it's just so pretty. I'm really heartbroken about that. Oh, but uh, yeah, this is 4,601 stitches completed for now and 25.57%. So, I'll just have to restitch. I think in those five days that I worked on it, I have frogged at least a couple hundred stitches because I think I did 80 stitches one day that I had to frog on one day. So that last day I did 230 stitches before I saw my mistake and then I put it away and I ended up doing 1,000, where is it? 1,380 stitches on Persephone because I guess, I guess I needed my frustrations out or something. But I mean, I'm gonna work on all my projects because I have a good amount, I think, to work with, but I'm hoping this month will be a lot better. I just, I'm realizing I don't like 40 count. It's just too hard to like get that one over two going on. I just miscount so easily on it, but I will suffer through it for this fabric. And I know I'm going to have, you can see I have enough for another project, another whole project. So I will use it. I will use it. I just, I'm going to dread it, but I will use it. Needless to say, I did actually meet my goal on it. I said that I wanted to finish a motif and I finished a whole motif because it was either this one or this one because I thought they were gonna take a long time like this one did. This one took a long time, but it was actually pretty quick, so I kept going. So I finished all the tree and the house and the little bat. I think I did these H's and this little one and these little ones. Was it these? No, I think I didn't have, I already had those. 
So I did meet my goal on this. So it's a little win. So that is Halloween Quaker. Oh, it makes me so sad. <laughs> I'm so attached to that one. I don't know what it is. I mean, I'm attached to all of them for different reasons, but that one is just, I don't know, maybe because it's so fun to do, but I'm very attached to that one. So this time I do have a new start today and I started this one on May 12th. And this one is Windrunner by... Kendra Gloomblade. What a freaking cool name, right? Totally sounds World of Warcrafty too. And this I found on Thread Geeks. And I did say in my last video that it was Crafty Road Gamer and Coco Hamas Stitchery. It wasn't Coco Hamas Stitchery. It was Sammy Liz who was getting the patterns together from that site. So I just want to make the correction. Um, in case you're like, oh, well, she said Coquahama Citry was doing this and now I can't find it. Well, that's because I lied. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I finally made a little start and this obviously doesn't have previous progress. So this is my new start. Let me get you up close because it's a little tiny, tiny thing. It's super small. It's got a lot of confetti. <laughs> I'm sure you can see that too. I'm sure you can see all those different colors in that one little spot. I think the first three rows here are color blocked and then it just went confetti. <laughs> so if you don't know, confetti is where it's like a bunch of sprinkles of different colors all over the place instead of being color blocked where it's just one color that you're stitching with for a long time. So this one is... I don't know. I think once I get to her, it's going to be color blocky on her, on Sylvanas. But the background is definitely confetti heavy. But, oh, I didn't even say that. Yes, it's a, it is Sylvanas from World of Warcraft. And this is going to be a really, really tiny one. Like you can see, like this is all my little fabric. And I did leave, what, three inches for um, framing and the bottom too, look. So this is really small. This is going to be a little tiny, tiny full coverage. And I think it's going to be really cute in its frame, like being so small, like a tiny picture of her. Um, it's going really fast. I am doing this on a 28 count easy grid. So it's a little piece of my other Persephone piece. And I'm doing two over one tent stitch. So it's the same thing like Persephone, but it's definitely taking twice the amount of time, just because this one has a lot of confetti and the other one is more color blocked. So there is a difference. I don't know, I'm really excited about it because it's so small that it's gonna go really, really fast. So you can see it's already getting a piece of her hair in here. That already showed up. I was like, oh man. And I think another piece of hair is coming in soon or her eyebrow, is it her eyebrow? I think it's her eyebrow that's coming in. So yeah, that is, it looks really cool with like those paint splatters and stuff that's in the background. And then there's my back on it. So it's still pretty neat um, compared to Persephone, but it does have a hint of Celestine in the back because of all the confetti. So that was really cool to discover. Yeah, see there's little bunches of threads there where there was a lot of colors in one spot. That's where her uh, what is it? Her hair? I keep, what is, where's my picture? Yeah, it's her hair. This is a piece of her hair right here. And that has so many stitches in one spot. So you can see like, there's just a chunk of threads there. And I think there's one right here. What is that? Oh, that's right here where there's like black and blues. So super cool. So I did work on this for the five days and I got 3,467 stitches and it's half of one page and that's out of 53,460 stitches. And so that makes me at 6.49% complete. So this was the third project that I worked on this month because I was really excited for the new start before I started working on Celestine. Yeah, I'm excited to finish the page and see how much like comes out already. 
So right now I just have this one tucked in a little plastic bag that came with my daughter's schoolwork. And I was like, oh, perfect, cross-stitch bag. <laughs> but I am planning to make a bag for this one. I just haven't thought of what fabric I want because they don't have World of Warcraft fabric. I mean, unless I go to like specialty online, but going to the regular craft stores, like even when the movie came out, there wasn't any World of Warcraft fabric, which is really weird. So I think I just might put this in like a video game fabric because I have quite a bit of fabrics that are like Nintendo and stuff like that. So I'll make a bag for her later on. I just haven't gotten around to doing it yet. All right, so that is all for my whips at this current moment. So let's go ahead and get into new starts that I am going to be starting this month. So the first one I'll talk about because it's been the one that I've been talking about, but it is gonna be the Long Dog Samplers, The New Normal. If you originally remembered, I had ordered this fabric, the Opalescent, and I didn't like this. So I went back to the same person and ordered the same thing, the 18 count Ada in Raven Black from To Die For Fabrics on Etsy. And I just got the original regular color without the opalescent. So this is it. Now I received this just the other day because when I, ordered it oh i ordered it a few days before my last video and she messaged me like two weeks later that she was out of the 18 count and she was waiting on an order to come in and it was going really late so she said do you want me to cancel or do you want a different uh count and i said no i'll just wait because i wasn't going to start it right away and so she's like okay so she finally messaged me the like a week ago and was like, hey, I got it in. I will send it out tomorrow. So she sent it out. This is a big piece too. This is huge. Look, look. This is a huge piece. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's like a dress on me. But yeah, so this is the piece. It's showing pretty true because it's like a bluish black, which wasn't, it still wasn't what I wanted. That's what I'm trying to say. It still wasn't the color I wanted because I wanted a nice dark black kind of color but I ended up getting an email from cross cross stitching supplies and it was saying that she got her big order of picture this plus and that everything's in stock in the shop and to pretty much run 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 put it in your cart and buy now before it all sells out and so I was like well let me go take a peek because I had just seen the email and it had just popped up. So I went to look like essentially right as I got the email. So I'm browsing through and I was like, okay, well, there's this fabric in Picture This Plus. And this one is called Shadow. And it is an 18 count Ada. Oh, it doesn't look as black in the camera. So it does look more blue in the camera, but it's not. It's definitely more black. Hmm. People seem to do this and it helps. Let me see if I can do that. A little bit. Not really. But it's definitely more black. It's like a grayish black. Not more like a purpley black. I mean, essentially it is more purple black, but that's like too purple that you're seeing. So this is actually perfect. This is kind of what I was looking for, essentially when I was looking for like the black kind of smoky look. And so if I show you this, and then I'll put this here, this is my silks for you. Look how pretty that looks. See how much more it stands out compared to this one? See, it's more blue, so it's gonna blend in more compared to this. Yes, I love that. See, now it's showing more true to color. But that's gonna be really pretty. So this is what I'm gonna be doing my 
new normal on. So I'm really happy that I ended up getting this too because I was like, well, I'm already waiting on a black fabric. But I was like, well, maybe this will, I have, a, I have options. I wanted options. So I'm going to be doing my accent colors in the gold. So I'm not sure if I want the etoile or a dark yellow or the diamant. See from here, the diamant looks so pretty, but in person, I'm like not sure about it. And this is different too. Like this is more like cording, like a corded thread compared to like a thread. So I think I won't use the basic color. It'll either be the etoile because it has the sparkles in it. Can you see that? It's got the sparkles in it. Or I will use the diamond. I don't know. And the camera looks so pretty with that though. So I think I'll do a test swatch with like both of these and see um, which one looks better. But yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and start this pretty soon. The only thing is, is how do I kit this up? <laughs> I'm like, this is like one giant loop. So I'm assuming I have to cut it like here or something and here and then fold it like that. So it'll be like this on my like thread drops, right? Or however I want it, like if I want the blues or the purples. Oh, maybe like that. So it gets all the colors. I don't know. I don't know how to get this up and I think I'm just tangling it now because it's like stuff is falling apart. <laughs> um, I don't know where the end is. I don't know where the beginning is. Oh, here we go. I think this is it. I don't know. So I'm sure I'm going to get started on this before, before I get your suggestions, but please help me. How do I, how do I get this up or show me a video or uh, a blog that has step-by-step -step instructions. How do you kit up your um, Sucks For You hanks? But I'm excited to start that now. Now that I have the fabric and everything, I'm really excited to get started and like see it come to life. And I never said this, but I really like this long dog sampler because it's so whimsical. It's got like the dragon and the little animals and there's like hearts and stars and an ocean with like a ship like it could be a pirate ship who knows but it's definitely more whimsical and that's why i really like it compared to all the others like castles in the sky is pretty nice um and there's another one i can't think of right now but this one i think has all the little elements that i love the most then I was watching Mama Bear, I wrote it down, Mama Bear Stitchery, and she was doing this next one. And when I saw it, I was like, wow, that looks super steampunky and very like old Victorian. So I had to do it because I see all the steampunk patterns but either they're just a bunch of keys or it's like a fox, like a steampunk fox, or I'm talking like little ones. Like I know Hate has like big ones with like steampunk stuff, but like I'm talking about like little patterns. They're all pretty, pretty boring. I want something with like gears and like something steampunky, like, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it, but this one really gave off the like, if I lived in a steampunk house, this would be on my wall. <laughs> so I really liked it. I thought it was super pretty, but the one I'm talking about, I should just say what it is, is Moss and Bugs. And this is by Punochka on Etsy. And I was trying to find a fabric that was close to what the original picture was. And so I went with this one. This is the closest one I found that I liked. And it is from Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers and it's Lava Chocolate. And it's an 18 count Ada 
and it's a 17 by 26. And I opened this up earlier, but so you can see it. I think this is the front. So it doesn't have too much modeling on it. This seems to be the only light spot, so I might stay toward the darker side. Or I don't know, I might use that lighter side. I don't know. We'll see when I'm ready to start, but this is the piece that I got. And if anything, it's a little more maroon brown instead of brown brown. I don't know. I don't know how to get that perfect color to come out, which I don't think many people do <laughs> to show perfectly on camera. Let me see if I can. Uh, yeah, it's still showing more brown. It's definitely more like a maroon brown, but it's really pretty. I'm really happy with the fabric. And then these are the colors. And it's just missing black. I just, I have my Kona black, so I didn't buy like a skein of it. But these are the colors that are gonna go on it. So the only thing I'm nervous about is this maroon color. In the camera, it's definitely a difference. But in person, it might be a little bit closer. Oh, there, you can see the color of the fabric now. That's the color of the fabric. Maybe it'll be okay. But yeah, so those are the colors minus the black that are gonna go on the whole thing. So it's gonna be a really easy, like small amount of color project. And that means I can travel with it. Not that I'm traveling, but I can like move around my house with it. So if I don't wanna stitch in my room, I, I mean here in this room, then I can go downstairs. I can probably, I don't know if I can do it in bed because it is a darker fabric. And even though it is an 18 count, I I don't know if they're gonna be a little too hard to see in the lower light, but we'll see. Like I said, I can move around and stuff like that. The fabric did take about a month to get to me. Um, so I'll have to keep that in mind next time I order anything from Fiberlicious Yummy Fibers, but I'm happy with it. I think it's like hand dyed when you, purchase it. Ooh, the sun came out. Now I have super good lighting. Uh, I can't see it now. It's in a bag. <laughs> um, so yeah, this one's going to be a little tiny one. It's only going to be six by 14 inches when it's completed. So it's going to be a really cute little tiny thing. And I think what I'll do when I finish it, since I have so many like steampunk charms and like chains and stuff is I'll decorate around it with all the steampunk stuff to like tie it together. So I will be starting that this month as well. Then I was watching Michelle Bendisici and she was starting this project called, what is it? Pumpkin House by Anna Petrunova. And it's from mybobbin.com. So it's a bunch of Russian cross-stitch patterns. And I fell into the rabbit hole of Russian cross-stitch patterns. And I, there are so many, there's so many really, really good patterns. Like there's a lot of back stitching in them that I can see, but all that detail is really cool. So as I'm digging through, I went on to Etsy and I found this pattern and it is called Space Dragon and it's from Lola Lada Shop on Etsy. And it, I just fell in love. He's so cute. It's got the celestial theme, you know, that I'm like totally into celestial theme right now. And I used to adore dragons. I adore, I still do. I adore dragons. But since I was growing up to maybe my early 20s, everything was dragons. Everything was dragons. I just, and it was mostly like English style dragons, not like Chinese or anything like that. But I just, those really gothic-y medieval dragons, those are my thing. And so when I saw this, it just kind of made me reminisce about that time when dragons were my life. So he's just adorable. So I wanted to stitch him up. So I went and bought the pattern and then I went and bought all my flosses. And when my picture to this plus pieces, because I ordered three of them, so when they came in, 
from cross stitching supplies I was like well I'll figure something out to do with these other ones because I I've seen them and I think they're beautiful fabrics and so I was like well since they might go out of stock again and nobody can find picture of this plus I might as well just pick up them and find something to stitch on them and this fabric is perfect so this one is gothic by picture of this plus and it's an 18 count Ada look how pretty that's so beautiful mm, yeah it's pretty close to color too that's what it looks like so I just like I said I see people buy this one and then I saw it on the website and I was like I have to have that I have to have it and this is perfect because the background on the space dragon the original photo it's like a dark blue and I was like well it's kind of boring <laughs> so I was like this is perfect because it's very blue and it makes all the colors stand out so these are all the colors lots of pastel -y blues and purples a little bit of yellow and there's like one of turquoise green here or like aqua green but yeah so these stand out so beautifully on this fabric let me turn it the other way so I think that's gonna look great. I think I'm missing black here as well. Black is another color. But yeah, you can see that's gonna be really pretty. So I'm super excited to start this one as well. Um, it's a little small one too. This one is only gonna be seven by seven inches when it's completed. So I'm gonna have a lot of this fabric left over to do something else with too. But I was, like I said, I fell into that rabbit hole and there was a, like so many cool patterns. Like the other thing I saw with that style of cross stitch patterns was the, they're like Harry Potter living rooms. And it's like during Christmas time. So they each have a Christmas tree and it's their common room looking through like a window. And I fell in love and these are what I want to stitch. But the only thing holding me back on it is that they don't have Hufflepuff. They have the Gryffindor, Slytherin, and Ravenclaw, but they don't have Hufflepuff. So I'm like, okay, well, let me search for it. Maybe it'll be somewhere else, but I cannot find it. So I'm wondering if they even have the Hufflepuff one or if it just hasn't come out yet. I don't know. So I'm not going to start those or buy them until I have all four, but I hope it comes out because I really want to do those. I really want to do a Harry Potter cross stitch. And I like the like sampler style, but they're also small. Like I want a nice big one. And the only big, big one that includes a lot is the one that, um, that has, I forget the name of it, but it's like got the look, all the people and I'll put a picture. I for, I'll put all the information. Um, yeah. And that one, I like that it has all the elements, but I don't like the style of it. I really want like a, like a daintier samplery kind of one. So I haven't found one yet that's like big. And I was like, well, I can get a bunch of the small ones and like mix and match the like different pieces. But a lot of them have the same exact motifs. So I don't want to buy like 50 patterns just to get like a little tiny thing. So I'm still on the hunt for a really good Harry Potter cross stitch pattern. Cause that's like one of my dream, what do they call it? Unicorn? patterns <laughs> so if you know a really good one or you know where I can find the Hufflepuff please let me know because I will I will buy that so fast so I guess the next part here I'm going to go into haul for a little bit so to start off I will show you the last piece of pictures this plus fabric that I bought and this one is haunted and it's also an 18 count Ada so this one is haunted. Yeah, that looks pretty true to color too. I think because the sun came out now that everything is looking a lot better. But yeah, so I got this one because I really liked it. It's a very neutral gray. I don't know what I, I'm going to stitch on it yet. So this one's going to hang out until I find another little tiny, um, another little tiny one to stitch onto it. So everything I really like has a lot of blue in it. So I'm like, well, I don't want to put blue like 
different shades of blue because if you can see these ones this was my first thought it looks okay but i think they blend in a little too much or they might blend in a little too much so that's why i like the dark blue i thought dark blue they really complemented everything everything will pop off of it like the stars and stuff this one i think they might get lost so I don't know we'll see what i do with this later on but it's super pretty i'm excited to use this one too so now i'm starting to see why people go crazy for pictures of this plus because it's actually really really beautiful fabric speaking of fabric i did pick up an 18 count white and an 18 count vintage Ooh, this one has the marbling on it if you can see that and i'm I thought this would just be cool to have. It was like super cheap. It was like $4, $5. And then this one was $5 as well. So I'm thinking I might try to dye something myself. I haven't picked up dye or anything yet because I'm not sure what color I would want to do it since I don't have a plan for it yet. But I'm kind of stocking up on white. So should the need arise, I can go ahead and dye something and get the color I want without having to order it. So I did pick these up. So those will go right into my stash. And then while I was at Hobby Lobby, I they had a giant sale on their charms, on a lot of their charms. So I picked up quite a few for like the little charms on my bags that I'm gonna make or will make or might make. Um, but I picked up this one and it's like a sea, oceany sea one. And then I picked up this one. It's got like music because I love music and then I picked up this one with all the celestial pretty stones and stuff like that this one I'm going to use for my uh, moths and bugs so those are really pretty I'm excited to put those on and then I picked up this one and I'm going to make a needle minder with this one as well as this one. I'll make a needle minder with this one. This one says, oh, it's not going to focus. This one says when it's dark, look for stars. And then I got a little castle. A little treasure chest which is cool because it opens with a magnet and you have little gems inside super cute I got one with little knights and then I got one with like little scrolls in a little bottle so super cute charms so a lot of those will go into my stash and then some of those will be made into needle minders which speaking of needle minders i've been making needle minders <laughs> so once upon a time among a million other things i used to collect pins and buttons so i found them the other day and i was going through them and i found some really cute ones that i'm like oh, this would be great to try making needle minders with so these are the ones that I've had that I've been working on. So I have a little link and I've already put the magnet on the back. So I snipped off the uh, pin with my cutting pliers and then I filed it down. I went to Walmart and bought a file. So it's got the four different um, things on the back on the sides so there's different um grits and so I filed it down just till it's smooth and then I used the E6000 and glued on my magnet so they're really easy to make but I have that one I have the star from Mario oh they're gonna jump around I have Marvin the Martian Gumby, I have Batman, he's hard to see, 
and I have Felix the cat. So I did buy these magnets from Etsy. They were, how do you say it? Neodymium, Neodymium. And the first one I got, I got from Michaels and they came in this four pack. And these ones are a 0.5 by 12.7 millimeter. And these worked great on, oh, this one. It was a pin or a button. Let me take it off. So it was a button. So I took off the back and I glued on that one, that size. And that's perfect for this button. Um, but yeah, it's for the hoard, World of Warcraft. If you know, you know. Um, so yeah, so I was like, well, let me try it out. So it was easy to take out the pin on the back of the button. And then I just E6000 the magnet on. And so that's what I've been using for this project. That worked out pretty perfectly. I do have this pin that we got in a loot crate, but I think my husband might kill me if I use this for a needle minder, even though he hasn't even seen this in years. So I might make this into a needle minder too. We'll see. He won't know. He can't even find his wallet half the time. He's not gonna know if I'm using his pin for a needle minder. <laughs> But I did end up getting um, some other sizes. So I was like, okay, let me get more because they're cheaper to buy online. Well, the first shop I went to, I miscalculated the size and I got these. These are so tiny. Look, that's not gonna hold anything. So I went back and I found a different shop. And so I did a lot better the second time around. I got this size which is slightly smaller than these. Boy, everything's just gonna snap together. See, they're a little smaller. And then I got this size, which is even smaller than that. And these work on my really, really tiny ones, like Gumby. That fits perfectly on Gumby. And then the other size is this one. So see, it fits perfectly back there. So I'm happy I have those. So now I can play around with all the other pins and stuff that I have and make some more needle minders. And now it just makes me want to go to like Hot Topic or Box Lunch and buy all their pins and make them all needle minders because they have so many cool pins now. So the last super cool thing that I ended up buying is a lap stand. So my back has been killing me holding this key snap the way I'm holding it. So I really wanted to try like a lower stand or a lap stand. So I saw this one on a video, I forget who's now, but they were talking about this. And so I went, you know, and Googled it and it's on Etsy. It's by K Creations. And this is the Baby Z frame lap stand. And at first, it did take a bit to get used to it, especially since when I turn it, it was unscrewing here. But now I got it to where if I move it, see, you can see the, the thing turns with it now. So I think I just had to wear it in a little bit. Um, but otherwise, I really like it. I'm enjoying it. It's a little awkward still, depending how I'm sitting. Um, but it might be my chair because my chair has arms. If I was sitting somewhere that didn't have arms, I might have better movement. Um, but yeah, it folds up real nice. Um, it's really nicely built. And it wasn't that expensive. It was like, oh, I think it was $69.99. And then I checked today and it was on sale. Of course it'd be on sale. <laughs> but it was like 10% off. So it's like $62.95. I wrote it down for you guys. Um, if you're in US dollars and whatnot. But that's uh the shipping is free and it has you have to pay for tax too. So but you can see like it folds down really nicely. 
And then this I think is engineering technicalities here. Um, it holds this part apart. So I'm sure it's, it has to be there and I'm sure there's a reason for it. I just don't know what. Um, but yeah, I'm really liking this and I'm happy I finally have it because it really helps to have it like up here when I'm working, when I'm sitting down, it's on my lap. So I'm happy. I'm happy to have it. I would love to have, you know, one of the super expensive ones, but once again, they are super expensive. So maybe in the future, but that's pretty perfect for the price that it's at. I think it's, it's a uh, good quality and it's made to order. So I did order it on May 11th and then it shipped the 25th and I received it on the 28th just because it's right here in Texas and they're like super close to me. So it was like a quick like uh, shipping time. Other than that, I, oh, so the last thing I'll share is that I started my little wart jar because they were getting everywhere. So this is my little, look at my little wad, my little wad of threads. So now they have a home for now, but it's, it'll be really cool to see more colors added to that. Um, the jar is just a cheap little mason jar. Okay, so next I will get into some shout outs. Uh, these are, I mean, I've been watching Floss Tube like crazy and there's quite a few people that I've been watching. Um, the more recent ones from this month that I really like is, let's see, there's Rolodex Stitches and she has such a great personality. She's got over like 2000 subscribers, so she's a bigger one, but yeah, she's, I really like her personality. It's super like comforting. And then there's Laura Gurr and she is so quirky. Like she makes me laugh every time I watch her videos and her cat is hilarious when he like jumps up and like wants to get in the front of the camera. Um, but yeah, I love her. She, like I said, she makes me laugh like a lot and she's just about to hit a uh, thousand subs. I think she's like on the higher end of the 900s right now. So she's super close to hitting to that 1000. Then there is the stitchy penguin and she's fun to watch. She's super bubbly. And she's got a couple fun projects that she's doing and she's always arguing with her husband. So that's super entertaining. And she's got about 200 subs. So she's in the under 500 club. There is the Graveyard Stitcher and she's only got three videos um, and she's got less than 200 subscribers, but she has got so much sass and like, She's always like forgetting things. So she calls herself an old lady and it makes me laugh and die at the same time. Cause I think she's not much older or she's about my age and the things she's saying, I'm like, oh, I can relate, <laughs> but yeah, she's really fun to watch. I'm enjoying her. And then Cat V Stitches, she's really calming to watch. She has a ton of projects. And so she's, she's got some really cool ones too. I think she's doing the All Souls. Um, it's like a Quaker or sampler or something with all the skulls on it. She hand dyed this really pretty purple fabric, stunning. And she's using like a very vibrant blue floss from Silks For You or Mrs. Savis, one or the other. And it's beautiful. So she's, she's, She's got some really great projects that I like seeing that she's working on. So I just came back. I thought I was completely done. I was downstairs making food for dinner or about to start making food for dinner. And I realized I forgot someone to mention in my shout outs. And I just found her like yesterday and she's amazing. Her name is Fever Dreams. She's only got three videos up right now. She's only been cross stitching for like three months or so. And she's got about six videos. Um, four are cross stitch uh, floss tube videos and two are yarn videos. And this girl does everything. She does cross stitch, she does sewing, she does knitting, crocheting. I think she said she did jewelry making. 
She was doing a little bit of resin. She was doing fabric dyeing and yarn dyeing and yarn, um, yarn weaving. So, so this girl does everything. And what I really like about her most is how edgy she is. She's got that like edgy alternative look to her and all her projects reflect that. They're all the edgy kind of alternative patterns that I like to go for. So I really enjoy watching her. And besides her now new floss tube channel going on, she does have a book tube as well. So she does lots of books that she was saying she does like murder mystery and things like that. But she's really, she was really cool. I loved watching her and she's super entertaining. She likes to break out into like sing song voice a lot, which is kind of unique because I don't see that in a video. Like usually people edit that stuff out. Um, but the, you know, the, she's being herself. I can tell she's like truly being herself. And the first video, she's a little awkward and you know, like we all are, but um, by the third video, like I felt like I was seeing her. And like I said, there's four. So it's like definitely who she is. So definitely go check her out. She's like new, new. She's only got like 27 subs on there. So she's like at the very bottom still. So I would definitely recommend um, checking her out for sure. But that was it. That was, that was the last one that I forgot to mention. So we can move on. So those are my quick little shout outs. I will list them all below for you um, if you want to go check them out. So I add them to my list of people that I watch when their videos pop up. And then last but not least is my plans. So I guess the first thing I'll talk about with plans is the sows that I'm interested in. So I really wasn't interested in sows. The only one I really was thinking about doing was the Dark Queen of the Seas by um, Autumn Lane Stitchery. And I'm sure you've seen it because it's a beautiful piece and a lot of people are doing it. But I wasn't sold on the look of it once more and more was coming out. I feel like there's just too much going on and I think it needed more focus on like one or two things and not like five or ten things. And I know like I can always like create my own like most people are doing but I just I'm not sold on it once once I started seeing all the extra stuff I'm just I'm not sold because I don't know what I would do um they're all great elements but all together it's a lot and so I think I'm just gonna wait until it's fully out and see what the overall picture is and then see if there's something like I want to take away and then if that's something I still want to make then I'll do it but for now I'm gonna skip that on that but I was watching Emma X stitching and she was talking about a style that they're that she's doing with someone else coming up in December called dinosaur December or dinosaur December sow and recently I found this owl forest embroidery pattern called dinosaur forest and it's super cute and that's of course the one that she like popped up and she was saying how it's like sold out and she's been checking every day for it to come back in stock. So I didn't know that. I just thought it was all sold out because I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, so it's good to know that it could come back in stock. But now that I know other people are waiting for it to come back, if it does, then I don't know if I'll be able to get my hands on it. So I was thinking instead that I would do something else. And you know, me being me, I like to be different. <laughs> so what did I find to stitch for this dinosaur sow? I am gonna be doing a pile of Yoshi's from Servo Stitches on Etsy. This is so cute. I love all the colors. I love all the Yoshi's. And this is perfect because my daughter, just right now before I started filming, she had beat Yoshi's Crack World. She's about to turn five and she beat that game. I was super impressed because even I was having difficulty with it when I was playing in the beginning levels, but she just like went through everything. It was really cool to see her play it. 
So I think I want to stitch this up for her and then I'll put it in her room or something in the distant future when it's finally done. I think she's really going to love it. So that's my plan for the dinosaur sow, but it's not till December. So I'm going to take my time kitting it up and getting it ready. And hopefully I can finish some of these other projects, the smaller ones, so I can add that in uh, to my little uh, schedule of projects and it won't be like too overwhelming. Although the one thing I did do is when I was buying all those charms, they had these really cute dinosaur charms. So I was like, well, I might as well make a project bag for it since I have the dinosaur charms, right? So this is the project bag I made. It's got Jurassic Park on it. And then the little charm, it's a little long neck like the land before time. <laughs> so this is what my Yoshi project's gonna live in when I finally start it. And when I start collecting like all the floss and everything, it'll go into this bag. Um, I didn't even check to see how much floss it, well, I didn't buy the pattern yet, so it doesn't say, but I'm not sure how much color is, is gonna go into it. It's pretty colorful, so it might have quite a bit. Um, so yeah, so I made my little project bag already. And the other reason I made them is because the day after my last video, I hit 2000 subscribers. So I decided that I wanted to do a giveaway. Now I did a giveaway on my sewing videos for Etsy gift cards. And so that one's said and done with, but I really wanted to do something special for my cross stitching video subscribers. Cause I know that I have two different groups now. I have my group of sewing, subscribers and I have my group of cross stitch subscribers and I think there's a mix of like diamond painting subscribers in there somewhere. So I decided to have this separate giveaway and I made two more project bags. The same exact thing and then one has a T-Rex and the other one has a little uh, Triceratops. So if you would like to win a project bag from me, then go ahead. You're going to fill out, fill it out, the Google form, my Google entry form, and you're gonna put your name, your YouTube name, so I know who you are, and your address. So that that way I don't have to hunt anybody down. There's no chance of you getting identity theft. No one can come in and say, hey, I'm this person. I saw that I won. And then I send the bag out and then you, you know, message me like, hey, I'm the winner. And I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> so uh, it's just to make things easier for me. So there's no issues with this. So you're going to fill that out. It has to be filled out or you cannot win. And then you have to be 18 or older and you're going to have to leave the word dinosaur in your comment. Anywhere in your comments, fine, um, but put the word dinosaur. So I really wanted to make these because I already knew that I was gonna make project bags for a giveaway. I was just trying to figure out what fabrics I wanted to use. And so that's why I went charm shopping because I wanted to see what charms will make me decide what fabric to go with. And I was hoping to find like a video game one so that these bags are very neutral and um, you know, either a, a man or guy or girl or woman, um, anybody would really enjoy these. So I found the dinosaur charms and I was like, well, I do have that Jurassic World fabric. And I ended up looking at my stash and I had the greatest complimentary fabric. So. It's got like a touch of masculine, a touch of feminine, but I wasn't sold on it. And it wasn't until I saw that dinosaur saw coming up and I was like, well, there you go. Someone's gonna need a project bag for their dinosaur saw. So that is why I chose this fabric to make these with. So I hope you're excited. I'm excited. I really enjoy making project bags. So I, I mean, it's another excuse to make them and another excuse to slash the stash with my massive fabric collection going on in there that we are just gonna ignore for right now. 
but yeah, so I have mine. Mine is a little smaller. So these ones obviously are a little bigger. They're about an inch bigger. So this one is the 12 by nine. And this one is 11 by eight. So this is just an inch smaller all the way around. Yeah, this, is, this will fit perfectly in a mailer bag. So this giveaway is open worldwide because I didn't want to exclude anybody. So I'm just trying to save money on shipping because it's going to be crazy if you live super far. So, so that's why I specifically made this size and not one of the really big bags that I love that I make for myself. Um, maybe in the future when I start making the big bucks on YouTube <laughs> in the super, super future, it will happen. But for now, you guys get mailer, mailer size <laughs> bags that fit perfectly in there. So go ahead, fill out those forms, leave your comment below. I will not wait until my next video because I only film this video the first Saturday of every month. So I will make a YouTube post on Saturday the 12th. Yeah. So you have until at least Friday the 11th or early on Saturday the 12th to get your comments in before I do the random comment picker and I'll pick two winners. So two people will win a bag one bag per person. So good luck to everybody. Now I'd love if you were a subscriber, but I'm not going to go hunt you down, but please, please, please be a subscriber or at least go ahead and subscribe now. But let me finish up these plans. Uh, I just got a couple more. So that is the dinosaur December sow. That's the hashtag. The other sow I'm going to be doing is going to be with Hannah Dowling and last video I was indecisive about which unconventional X stitch pattern I wanted to buy. And so she narrowed it down real easy for me and said that her and a couple other YouTubers are going to start the Medusa sow. So I decided that I'm going to jump in on that and that starts in January of 2022. So that one is the unconventional Medusa Sal. And I decided that I'm going to do her with the non-background because that'll save time for me from stitching so I can move on to other things. The only thing is now I don't know what fabric to put it on. I don't know if I wanna go with that same colored background um, fabric or if I wanna switch it up to something else, but I'm not too sure because she's all grayed out so I don't know what else she would look good on. So I still have time. It's not till January. So I'm going to start slowly kidding that one up as well. So if you want to join that, there's already a hashtag on Instagram that is set up for that. So hopefully you would all like to come and join in that one as well. So the last bit is my goals on what I want to get done on each of my projects. So starting with Celestine, I want to get about one, two, three, maybe three columns on this page done. I should say four, let's say four. Let's reach higher in case, because I think three is pretty easy to get to. Um, so I'm gonna say four full columns on the next page underneath here. So this is gonna get fun. It's gonna start getting into her face now um, up to here. So I'm excited to start seeing that. Hopefully it's gonna get color blocky but for now, I'm going to start on that new page and I want to get at least four columns done. So four columns for Celestine. On Persephone, I want to get another page. So another page on this one. This should be easy to reach. On Halloween Quaker, <laughs> I, I just want to fix it and I'll do another mm, big motif. So I might do this one. Maybe I just need to move up here for a little bit, or I might finish the row of houses and trees down here. So we'll see. That's the goal on this one. And then I have Windrunner. And on Windrunner, let's say, I'll aim a higher goal on this one because I really want to see work done on it. Let me finish the page on this one. 
And then the new normal, I think one motif is good. On moths and bugs, one motif is good. And then on a space dragon, I think maybe like one whole blocked section because he's got a little blocky sections like the ball, the glowing orb, and like the wing. You can see there's blocked colors. So just one block color because I don't know where I'm going to start on him yet. So if I start in the middle for once, then it might be like the orb or like his arms or wings or whatever is there, right there. So that is my plans. Oh, man. Okay, so <laughs> I did get a comment about how I framed my, my uh, Beetlejuice, but I can always show that when I finish Halloween Quaker. So when I finish Halloween Quaker, which is at least gonna be another, also, you know, it's gonna be a bit, um, then I will do my step-by-step -step on how I frame it, it up. Um, I wanna pop this out, but it took me forever to get it straight. So. <laughs> I'll, I'll show the, the Halloween Quaker uh, when I get to it on how I frame it. Cause I don't know how I wanna, what frame I wanna put it in yet either. And then I did get um, some comments, really nice, beautiful comments saying that they wish I had updates more. I just, I don't think I would have enough to show in such a short amount of time like if I were to do like two weeks I don't think I can get a good amount done just with stuff going on um, a month seems good because I have a whole month to like move things around and like work around but since I do all my other like videos and stuff it's my cross stitch stuff is usually at night and it's like my quiet time when the girls go to bed. So if I only do two weeks of that, I know on some of these, I can get quite a bit of progress done in like five days, but I don't know if it'd be just not enough to do like one short little like 20 minute video maybe um, compared to these now much longer videos since I'm doing a lot more, they can be one long video and I can get everything at once. So, like I said too, I don't know if I'm able to like add in another video on a Saturday. And I was thinking, well, maybe three weeks, but it's such an odd number and it's hard to keep track every three weeks. So I know I have a calendar. I use it sometimes, sometimes I don't. So just doing it on the same day every month is just easy. Otherwise it'd be every two weeks, but like I said, I don't think two weeks is enough. So. I don't know, I'm still on the fence about doing these more often, but for now, uh, the next video will be out on July 3rd, July 3rd. So I'll definitely be seeing you then. Um, otherwise, any other things I wanted to mention, the last little thing I'll just throw out there is that I started a new series called Whips and Myths, and I basically retell Greek mythology right now, but eventually it'll turn into more different kinds of mythology, but I pretty much do a whip. So right now I just have one and it's got a diamond painting whip, but I hope to include some of my cross stitching whips in there too. So if you like Greek mythology and you don't mind seeing my different projects that I'm going to be switching in and out, uh, then you can definitely check that out. I'll leave that first one linked below for you too, if you want to go take a peek at it. But otherwise, that is it for today. I hopefully will not have a head of ugly hair <laughs> next time you see me. It's, it's okay right now, but it's not ideal. So hopefully a better, happier me <laughs> in the next video. So yeah, subscribe if you have not subscribed. Um, go ahead and like if you'd like to like and enter the giveaway if you wanna win a really cool dinosaur project bag and make sure you fill out that Google form, the Google entry form, link down below. And that is it. So I hope to see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching, bye.